Well, holy smokes, folks, this ain't no dang joke as I just put $83,000 into a stock today. Yes, one stock. For me to make that big of a move in a stock here today, there has to be some <laughs> pretty exciting stuff, I think, uh, coming up for the stock. So we're getting into detail on why I'm so excited about this stock and why such a ridiculously aggressive move. Because $83,000, even for me, is very aggressive move nonetheless. Okay, And no, it's not TTCF stock, although you guys know I, I love that one. But no, that's not the stock I bought here today that I put $83,000 into. Okay, So yeah, we'll get into this. Hope you guys enjoy this. As always, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you want to be notified every time I drop a video, hit the little notification bell and it'll be, it'll notify you sometimes. I mean, it's YouTube. They'll notify you whenever they want to notify you guys. All right, so let's get into this. First thing we got to talk about is obviously the market is, is, um, you know, been pretty rough recently and specifically with small caps have been devastated. Right. And so this is where you get into a tough situation as a, a stock picker, right? Because it's like you see a lot of deals. You see a lot of stocks you like. And there's probably there's probably 20 or 30 stocks right now that I think are good buys. Right now, like 20, 30 stocks that I think, you know, over the next two, three years is easy, easy money, right? When you get in that sort of market, the tough thing is it's like, hey, where, where do I put the money? Do I put my money in, in this stock? This stock, I see all these deals out there. It's actually sometimes easier to, to stock pick in a, in a market that things aren't downtrending so much and they're kind of like flatlining, right? Because in a flatlining market, you'll get some opportunities out there, but it's not a ton of opportunities. It's also difficult if you're in a skyrocketing market because then it's hard to find deals, right? So right now, is kind of you got to figure out like where are the best places to put your money and obviously this particular stock I'm extremely excited about okay this stock I would call it a very no 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 not very an extremely low risk stock and I mean extremely low risk and I call it a very high reward stock. Now, low risk meaning the chances I lose 50% plus of my money in this stock over the next 2-3 years insanely low. Like I would call it probably about a 1% risk, about a 1% probability that I could lose 50% plus of my money in this stock over the next two, three years. Also, this stock is a very high reward stock, meaning it, it, there's a high probability this is a stock that will 2x plus. I think this stock will 3x over the next 24 months. So yeah, I mean, 3x in, in 24 months, not too bad nonetheless. And um, I'm very, very confident. And usually, I don't make a very many two two year out predictions. Like usually, if I'm making a prediction, is usually three years out to five years out. That's my investing time horizon. But I think this particular stock, based upon where the levels it's gotten down to, and based upon what's going to happen with the stock price and the fundamentals of the business over the next two years, I think it's pretty much a three x stock uh, over the next uh, two years, literally over the next twenty four months. And like I said, extremely low risk in this one. Not one of those stocks that I'm like, oh my gosh, man, this could go so bad for them. No, just not that type of stock at all. It's a needs-based company. There's like very, very, very little risk in this one. So why 83,000? Why such an aggressive move in this stock here today? Well, two reasons. One is I want to fully build out this position by 22. Fully build out means essentially I, if I don't buy any more of the shares, then I'm okay, right? Like I'm happy with what I hold. I'm always willing to add more shares. I'm always willing to uh, buy more of the stock. Like let's say it goes down in 22, the first few months or whatever. I'm, I'm happy, I'll buy more shares of stock. However, if it just starts going up from, from here on, Sweet. Like, like I've got my position fully built out. This has been one of those stocks I've been trying to do this. It's, I've been adding very aggressively the last two months specifically with this particular stock. Very aggressively the past two months. It's not a stock I've been buying for a long period of time, but over the last two months I've been buying, buying, buying because I, I think this one's going to be a beast in 22 and beyond. And so I'm trying to fully build out. This and the chef are the only two stocks I can really think of off top my off top of my head. They're those sorts of stocks that I'm like, I've got a fully built out. And by the way, the chef is a fully built out position for me now, meaning if the chef was to go down, I would also add to that one. But if it just starts going up from here, I'm, I'm happy with what I hold. But that's a stock, essentially. It's, it's one of those stocks that I've got to like add, add, add aggressively because I think it's a high probability it's going to start to be a beast in 22 and, and beyond. Okay. Second reason is there's a low probability, in my opinion, and we'll go through some things here. There's a low probability there's going to be any major drop in this stock lower. So, you know, if I was, if I thought it was a realistic possibility that stock drops another 20%, I would probably not add this aggressively, but I think there's an extremely low probability that this stock drops in any meaningful way from here on. And that's regardless of what happens in the stock market, regardless of what happens in the Russell, regardless of what happens in, in S&P 500, the NASDAQ, 
I think there's an extremely low probability this stock drops in any meaningful way from here. And so that's another reason why I'm adding so aggressively. Why do I say that? Well, I've been watching kind of the price action of the stock. And even in this really rough market, it hasn't been making any major downtrends now. It seems like the type of stock that is out of sellers now just for the stock. And it's just impossible to get this stock down. I looked at a day like today. Today was a horrible day in the market, right? Horrible day in the market, horrible day in the Russell specifically and for small caps. And this stock was down 0.53% today, down four cents, down four cents on a day like that. This is just showing you this is a stock that it's run out of sellers now at this point. Because if you're talking about that bad of a day for the market when the Russell's tanking like it was and this stock is hardly down, that's a pretty good sign that this stock is um, in a position where is extremely low probability it moves in any meaningful way down any any further essentially it's just you get to that point in a stock where you just start to run out of sellers same thing is with a skyrocketing stock and this is what happened in january of 2021 you just ran out of buyers, right? So those stocks like literally couldn't keep going up because you ran out of buyers in those stocks and there's just too much selling pressure that started to come in. And that's why we saw a ton of small caps fall, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80%. You run out of buyers. On the flip side, when you got so many people selling all at once, you just run out of sellers in one of these stocks. And this stock is it pretty much run out of sellers. And it's, it's literally, you can watch the price action and it just shows you it's, it's literally running out of, um, you know, literally sellers of the stock, okay? No. Three things that are very important. I'm 0% worried about this business model. 0%. I don't care. Like, it doesn't matter if there's a recession. It doesn't matter if there's a great economy, an okay economy. There's, I have no worries about this business model at all. This is an execution squad. They, they, got, a, they got a team at this company that is uh, pretty darn impressive. That's all I'll say about that. Like, the management team of this company, I've checked them all out and I'm like, these people know what they're doing. A lot of the executives have come over from Clorox over the past few years. They know what they're doing, okay? And they're gonna get a lot of growth out of this business in future years. And uh, this is a company that's one brand. They don't, they don't have to market a million different brands, which is going to give them huge cost synergies long term and allow them to get into so many new product categories and so many new products over the coming years because their brand is just synonymous uh, like across the board. You walk into a Target store and you start walking around and you're like, oh, there's a product for that company. Oh, there's a product. Oh, there's a product. And it's like a million different products. And it's like, this is just a thing of beauty. Whereas the old school companies that are very bureaucratic, they have to spend marketing dollars on all these different brands to try to basically keep them going. Going, right this company they can spend money on one brand and that covers the whole space it's a thing of beauty okay so the stock i went ahead and, and bought eighty three thousand dollars plus of here today and we're gonna get into this a little deeper here is honest company i bought eleven thousand one hundred and eleven shares of hnst today at seven dollars and 48 cents that is, once again, even for me, that is a massive move. Most of the moves I make in the market are anywhere from $2,000 to about $20,000. So this is me essentially putting chips on the table and saying, I've got a, you know, a straight flush here, or a royal flush, and uh, I'm, I'm going all in. You know, I don't want to say all in because, uh, you know, obviously it's not technically all in, right? But it's just like, like I'm going to bet super heavy on this one. And right now, because I think there's an extremely low probability this one drops in any significant manner. And I think this stock, you know, is going to 3X. I think it's going to be a 21 plus dollar stock in a matter of within the next two years, essentially. Okay. Let's go through some things here. Okay. First off, 52 week range for the stocks, anywhere from $7.20 to about $23.88 rate right around when they went IPO. They did go IPO in May, May 3rd of, of 2021. That's, I mean, what a, what a horrible time to go IPO essentially, right? It's just, you know, the thing is they were probably planning out the IPO, right? In the back half of 2020 or the beginning part of this year when you saw a ton of these stocks just flying in the sky and it was like, okay, this is a great time to go IPO. And basically after February, like, you know, all the small caps just started sinking. There's just no activity there. And so they couldn't have gone IPO at the worst time. But the good news is for somebody like myself, I see the stock at $8, $7 and I'm just like, gimme, 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 gimme shares. Anything under $10 is just, in, it's stealing money in my opinion, long-term. It's a $679 million market cap on this company. And, uh, yeah, this is going to be a multi-billion dollar market cap over the next few years, in my opinion, like $2 billion plus, then $3 billion, then $5 billion, and grow into a much, much larger company. And something very important here today is, once again, look at the price action. Only down a half a percent on a massive down day, and the volume was pretty heavy for this stock. 2.3 million shares traded hands, right? 11,111 of those shares were my shares, right? Uh, but yeah, 2.3 million, which is above average volume there. Pretty interesting in regards to that. But it's been a disastrous kind of 
IPO. It's just no one wants a piece of anything that's went public in the past year. Like it's like try finding any stocks that have done great that went IPO in the past year. Good luck. That's all I'm going to say. Good luck. It is very few and far between that you can find any stock that has went IPO or even like a direct listing, a SPAC situation over the past one year. And it's like, wow, this stock price is so amazing. Like, no, they're just all have been downtrending beasts. And this is just another example of those downtrending beasts. And it doesn't matter, like, you know, in terms of this year, it hasn't mattered what you do for numbers. This company, their last quarterly numbers were insanely impressive. Like, like I, I walked away from that and I think this was the most impressive of any stocks I've been buying, this is the most impressive quarterly numbers I saw from a company in terms of what was expected versus what they did in the commentary. But it doesn't matter right now, right? It's just been sell everything, all hands on deck, sell, 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 right? Let's talk about valuation for a minute. The price to sales ratio is around two for the stock or maybe even under two if you're going on a forward basis, right? So this is extremely important to rem to remember here. Also keep this number in mind right here. Revenue growth expected next year of 13%, all right? Nine analysts cover the stock. So there's already a good amount of analysts that cover the stock, which is going to be important for 2022 and beyond for this company, because it's a company that I think funds are going to be able to wrap their heads around easier and start plowing in money in 2022 and moving forward, right? Especially as this company gets closer and closer to lapping one year being a public company. They don't have to fight for that. Whereas like a TTCF stock like I own, right? They have to fight for the next year to get more analysts to cover the stock so they can get more attention from Wall Street. It's a very important thing. If you can't get the there's thousands of stocks in the stock market, if you can't get the attention, of different funds, you have different ETFs or whatever. How are you gonna how are you gonna get people to buy the stock, right? And so like tell your story out there. So in and, and you know, Honest already has a pretty good relationship I've seen with CNBC. So they're gonna be able to get a lot of traction in 22 and moving forward and get the attention to tell their story and tell how undervalued this stock is. Price to sales ratio around two or under, right? For this company right now with 13% growth. Their biggest direct competitor. The biggest direct competitor would be Procter & Gamble, P&G, because P&G has a lot of different brands in a lot of different spaces. And it's the same thing with an Honest company. They have a lot of different brands in a lot of different spaces. Now, keep in mind, Honest is going to smash Procter & Gamble's growth rates over the next five, 10 years. Not even going to be close. Like, you know, Procter & Gamble is such a bureaucratic company and such a company that is so large now. It's hard for them to get any substantial growth in 22 and moving forward, right? Whereas a company like Honest, they move fast. They're innovative. They move fast. They're going to move way faster than Procter & Gamble. Plus, they just their numbers are so much smaller. There's so much market share for them to get from a company like Procter & Gamble. And if you look to the most recent numbers and you look at the most recent reports, you're going to find that Honest is stealing market share from all these big dog bureaucratic companies that are kind of the old school in nature companies, right? A Procter & Gamble, this is a company that I remember, you know, being a kid and my mom would watch soap operas, right? I remember being a little kid. My mom would watch whatever the soap operas were. And Procter & Gamble just, you know, would run commercial commercial after commercial after commercial for soap operas. And that's what they understood, television advertising. We're, we've gone into a whole new age around social media and imagine where we're going to be in 10 years from now. In big companies like this, they have a lot of trouble adjusting, right? There's an old bureaucratic company that is used to doing things a certain way, spending money a certain way. And a company like Honest, I just look at their marketing, the way they think about these things is just so much different than a company like Procter & Gamble. Plus, remember, Procter & Gamble has to advertise a million different brands. That uh, takes a lot of marketing dollars, right? So the growth rates aren't even going to be close. And then price the sales ratio for Procter & Gamble with their little mini growth, right? Five plus for this company. So I'm getting Honest as a deal steal of around a price to sales ratio of two or maybe even under two, right? And versus a Procter & Gamble at a five. And the growth rates, once again, won't even... like. Honest's uh, profit growth is going to be ridiculous over the next five years. So you're not even going to be able to compare them to, uh, to P&G, right? And the price to sales ratio, they deserve a, a price to sales ratio more than Procter & Gamble. They deserve a price to sales ratio of six or seven right now. And they're at around two. That's how significantly undervalued Honest is right, right now. HNST, it's just, it's insane. Like literally, it's one of those stocks that you look at the stock price and it's like, this is insanity. Like literally, this is insanity right now, right? Now, in terms of that stock price and why I'm so confident this is going to be one that skyrockets outside of just the raw numbers, right? And the 13% revenue growth and the execution of the business model and all those things, right? Plus these numbers of the next year get so easy to comp against. Last year they had a comp against, they also have like a cleaning business, sanitation products, things like, you know, like sanitizer products, things like that, right? They had a comp against all those numbers from that huge influx in 2020, right? Now they don't have to comp against those anymore. So the comps are super easy over the next, you know, several years. So essentially, when you go from taking massive losses like this company is, is going to have taken this year, right, because of the IPO and the super tough comps all at one, you just have like a pile up, right? Now, 
Next year, analysts have them only losing 11 cents. When you start getting close to profitability, most I've seen it the far majority of time, whenever I see a company getting close to profitability, the stock price has a massive step up. I see these stocks go up all the time, 50%, 100% plus when a company gets close to profitability. Then you get another even more massive rise in the stock price when they start reaching profitability and you start putting out quarter after quarter of profitability. The, 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 you know, how fast that stock price can go in, up is, is rather ridiculous, okay? And the reason being is a lot of companies, a lot of people don't want to own, either can't own or don't want to own, I'm talking about funds, individual investors, a company that's losing a ton of money. When you start getting to prof, close to profitability, people start looking like, oh, wow, look at the progress this company's making. They could go profitable within the next 12 months, blah, 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 right? And so you start attracting all those investors. And then when you actually get profitable and you start putting up profitable quarter after profitable quarter, you get this another massive influx of money because people look at it and they're like, wait a minute, this company's now profitable. Plus they have a super strong revenue growth. Plus they're at an insanely cheap price to sales ratio. Okay, yeah, let me hop in this one because it's a massive opportunity here. So this company, in my opinion, over the next year or two is going to get a huge rise in the stock price based upon getting close to profitability. And then another massive move up once they start reaching consistent profitability, which is going to happen over the next couple of years for this company. So yeah, big ups is going to be what's going on there. Okay, now I challenge everybody, okay? Download the dang Hungry Bull app, or you can go to Honest Investor Relations page and go through a bunch of different links or whatever. Download the Hungry Bull app on your iOS or your Android. Listen to the latest earnings call, okay? There's no way you're going to be able to listen to that latest earnings call. It's absolutely free to do so. There's no way you're going to be able to listen to that latest earnings call from Honest and walk away anything other than extremely excited. I've been doing the stock market for a long, long time now, and I can tell you that earnings call was phenomenal. It's impossible to listen to that thing and be like, eh, I don't know about this one. No. Okay. If you know anything about stocks, you're going to walk away from that one. Extremely impressed with the direction of the management team, the numbers they're talking about, independent parties that have done studies on where the numbers are at market share and how they're stealing market share from other companies. And literally you're going to walk away from that conference call. Like very, very excited about this company and its future, not just over the next 12 months, but over the next 24 months, 36 months and 48 months. And so, yeah, that's why I'm in Investing so heavily and that's why I put so much dang money in the stock here today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video as always. Much love. Don't forget to subscribe and have a great day. Peace.